Hey, what's going on? My name is Michael. You guys are watching IDB, and this is the all new M4 iPad Pro. The model I have here is the base model. This is the cheapest 11 inch, 256 gig storage model. And this is the cheapest way that you can get into Apple's newest M4 processor. I wanna take a deeper look and see what kind of iPad experience you can get when you get the base model cheapest iPad Pro. Let's go ahead, roll the intro and jump right in. All right, so here is the all new iPad Pro. And the first thing I wanna show you is just this new design. The pretty much the only design change is just how thin it is. You can see here that the iPad Pro, this is the 11 inch model, is now 5.3 millimeters thin. When I held this thing for the first time in the Apple store, I was quite astounded. But now after using it for a bit and poking around on the UI, it just feels like an iPad, honestly. I did hold the 13 inch and that thing is 5.1 millimeters. That thing does feel crazy. You wouldn't think that 0.2 millimeters makes that much of a difference, but it actually does. However, it still is a change compared to the old 11 inch model. It definitely does feel like Apple calls it a magical piece of glass, no matter how cringy that does sound. It just feels impossibly light and thin, and it really does feel uh, quite futuristic in my opinion. On the back of the iPad, if we take a look at the camera, there actually was a downgrade this year, which is uh, sort of a letdown. So we have this main wide camera, and what's actually kind of funny is that this is the exact same camera sensor that we have had on the 2018 iPad Pro and on. So Apple has not made any changes to this main camera, and as you can see, they have actually removed the ultra wide camera. So Apple has kind of moved some stuff around in this module to still kind of make it look like a pro camera system. But here we have the main wide camera. Underneath it, we have the LiDAR scanner. On the top right, we have a new ambient light sensor, which I assume is going to be for better outdoor adjustment of auto brightness. And then below it, we have the all new flash, which has been updated this year to make it much better for scanning documents. And then below that, we also have a microphone as well. You'll also notice that inside this camera module, it is a little bit different. So it is coated in what feels like an aluminum finish. This is different compared to the previous model, which had a glass insert in the camera. And I definitely think I prefer this design a lot better. So this iPad Pro starts now at 256 gigs of storage. If I jump into settings right here, and then go general and about, you can see it has 256 gigs. I've downloaded a few applications and out of the box, I believe I had around uh, 225 gigs and now I have 222 after I have downloaded a few things. So uh, we get a lot more base storage on this iPad Pro now, which is definitely a good thing. One thing I do wanna mention though, which is a little bit strange, is this 256 gig iPad no longer supports ProRes video. So inside the camera application, if you go into video, honestly, I don't know who's gonna be doing that much pro video recording on the iPad, but I should note this just in case you were wondering. The previous M2 iPad Pro was able to record ProRes video only if you had the 256 gig model and up. So as you may remember, the previous iPad Pro had a 128 gig model and that one was not able to do ProRes. So with this one having 256, you may be wondering why can't this one do ProRes as well? And I think I found the answer online. That is because the previous M2 iPad Pro, the 256 gig model had two storage units. Each one was 128. However, on this M4 iPad Pro, when you get the base model 256, it is only one storage unit inside the iPad of 256 gigs. So I guess the previous M2 had faster storage when you got the 256 model. So it's definitely something you should consider if you're moving around a lot of large files. The 256 gig model, uh, the M4 compared to the M2, might actually be a bit slower in terms of read and write speeds for the SSD. And possibly the biggest selling point of this new iPad Pro is the new OLED display. Apple is calling it a tandem OLED, and this really is some impressive technology. So inside an iPad this thin, Apple has actually managed to fit in two OLED panels. The very first OLED panel at the base of the iPad is actually transparent, and then there is a second one on top. So Apple is actually combining the light from two OLED panels to allow it to get to up to a thousand nits of full screen brightness. And then when you are viewing HDR content, it can get all the way up to 1600 nits, which is pretty impressive for an iPad of this size. 
I have a YouTube video here uh, showing some 4K HDR sample. I'll just make sure that it is on max quality right here. And then I'll go ahead and play this for you. It might not come through on uh, YouTube. However, you uh, can see that it does look quite good, uh, even though YouTube is doing some compression on this video. So as I'm watching this, the first thing I notice is just how black everything is. When we had the 11 inch before, that thing had an LCD panel. And this is the first time we have an OLED panel on an 11 inch model, uh, let alone any iPad for that matter. And I'm definitely noticing that the blacks are a lot blacker uh, than I had on my 11 inch model with an LCD panel. I do remember when I had my 12.9 inch iPad Pro that had a mini LED display, I was watching some videos like this. And while the blacks did look quite good, there was a lot of blooming around light spots. Now, if you don't know what blooming is, uh, for displays that use local dimming, it has, I think, 1,024 local dimming zones. That means there are little spots behind the panel that light up when they need to. Uh, they can't be that precise and you get a lot of blooming. I'll show a picture of blooming on the screen right now. Luckily, we will not have any of those problems on the iPad Pro models because they now all have OLED. This iPad Pro still does have 120 hertz, and as I flick around the UI, it feels buttery smooth, just as I would expect it to. One thing I should note, however, is that this iPad Pro actually has a slightly better ProMotion display than the previous iPad. That is because the previous M2 iPad Pro and before was able to go in a range from 24 hertz all the way up to 120 hertz. This iPad Pro can go from 10 hertz to 120 hertz. So why does that matter? Well, the iPad does not have an always on display. So you might think that that is just a, a complete waste of that technology. However, where I think it's going to come in very handy is in situations like this, where you're not doing anything on the screen and all of your UI is just sitting still. My display right now is at 10 hertz, whereas compared to if I had the previous iPad Pro, it would be sitting at 24 hertz, which is going to drain the battery a lot faster. So when you have your iPad in standby mode, I think the display is going to be a little bit more efficient in terms of your battery life. And then another change on this iPad Pro is Apple has moved the face ID sensor and the front facing camera to the horizontal edge compared to the vertical edge. So if you are someone who uses a keyboard on your iPad Pro, this is going to be much better for video calls. You may remember when you were using FaceTime on the other iPads that had the camera on this edge, it would always skew your face off to the side. Luckily, it has now been fixed on this iPad. It's actually kind of funny, the first ever iPad to get a landscape front-facing camera is the cheapest base model 10th generation iPad. Luckily, Apple has now brought it to the new iPad Air and this iPad Pro as well. So if I go ahead and open up the camera and flip it around on me, you can see the camera is now here on the horizontal edge and this is going to make it a lot better for video calls. This front facing camera is also an ultra wide. So if I click right here, you can see here is my entire studio. You can also see my workout area right there. Uh, this ultra wide camera is going to be fantastic for FaceTime and Apple calls this feature a center stage. It is able to follow you around the frame as you move around in FaceTime calls, which is a really awesome feature. So now I wanna to jump to the fun part of this video, which is testing. The first thing I wanna try out is the document scanning on this iPad. Cause like I said, Apple has updated the camera hardware and we have this all new flash, which is apparently better for documents. And we also have this LiDAR scanner, which I don't know if it'll make a difference with document scanning, but we are gonna find out. So inside of notes right here, I will click on the camera icon and then I'll click on scan documents. Now, what I'm gonna to try to do is you can see I have a shadow on my table right here. Apple said that there is some pretty cool AI features in this iPad that uh, can remove shadows from your documents. So I'm gonna to try to add a shadow with my hand on top of the document. So here I got this and then there. So I got a shadow right over top of my paper. And let's try to get this scan with my iPad. You can see the flash went off just like that. Let's go ahead and take a look at the document. And wow, that is actually really good. So there was a shadow of my hand about over here. And honestly, I can't even tell uh, that there was a shadow on this uh, scan document. So I think Apple did a fantastic job with whatever AI they're using to remove the shadows. I think document scanning on this iPad is going to be much improved. 
Another thing with this iPad Pro is Apple has actually changed the amount of microphones from five to four. So I have no idea why Apple is doing so many downgrades on this iPad Pro. Uh, we go from having two cameras to one, we go from having faster storage on the 256 to slower storage, and now we go from having five microphones to four. Let's go ahead and see if it makes a difference. I'll open up the camera here, I'll go into video, and I'll start recording like this. So you are now watching the footage from the iPad and you can let me know how it sounds uh, from the microphones on the iPad as I'm doing this video test. So let me know in the comments if the audio sounded okay coming from my iPad. Again, I don't think that many people are gonna be doing professional audio recording from the iPad unless you need to do something in a pinch. But uh, let me know in the comments how the audio quality sounded in that test. One other thing I wanna test in this iPad is the speakers. Now I always worry about the speaker quality going down when Apple makes their products thinner because honestly it doesn't look like they can fit that high quality of speakers in an iPad this thin. So let's just go ahead and find out. On YouTube, I have a copyright free song. I'll go ahead and start it from the beginning and let's uh, crank up the volume all the way and see how it sounds. Okay, that's, that's actually crazy. I was not expecting the speakers to sound that good on this iPad Pro. The iPad Pro has four individual speakers, uh, two on each uh, corner right here. And wow, that, that sounded amazing. I don't know how it came through on the video, uh, simply because my microphone is attached to my shirt, so I don't know how it's gonna uh, translate to YouTube, but that sounded fantastic. Uh, the iPad was actually vibrating as I was holding it. You could literally feel the sound in the iPad. And just each instrument separation you can hear on each speaker, and uh, the highs are pin sharp, and the bass is surprisingly deep for a device this thin. So if you're gonna be using this like a movie watching machine, like honestly most iPad users are, I think you are going to absolutely love the speakers on this iPad Pro. Another thing I always like to test on iPads is the Face ID distance. Because when you compare it to Face ID on the iPhone, for some reason it always works better on the iPad. It works better from different angles and also from further away. So I'd say here my iPad is about two and a half feet away from my face. If I go ahead and lock it and move it a bit further away, let's hold it at an angle. It says face is too far away, but it actually still unlocked, which is pretty great. I'll go ahead and give it an even tougher angle, so I'll almost face it flat on the table. And then it didn't work. If I tilt it up a little bit and then try to do it, there, it got my face. So I'd say it works from more angles than the iPhone Face ID does, just because I think Apple has more room to put better Face ID hardware uh, up in the corner of this iPad than they do the iPhone. However, I don't think it has been improved compared to the previous iPad Pro model. Now, in this part of the video, I wanna run a Geekbench test. If you don't know what Geekbench is, it pretty much just runs various benchmarks to test the performance of the CPU. So I'll go ahead and run CPU benchmark, and I'll just let this run in the background. I'll skip this part of the video. So the Geekbench test is done, and here we got 3,600 for the single core and 13,000 for the multi-core. This doesn't mean anything if we don't have anything to compare it to. So here in Safari, these are the results from the M2 iPad Pro. We got 2,500 for single core and 9,600 for multi-core. You can see here we are now into five digits for the multi-core and 3600 is a pretty big jump for single core. So I think this iPad Pro is going to be insane if you are doing big tasks on it like I'm about to show you in this video. However, some people just buy the iPad Pro to get the best iPad experience possible. Honestly, that's sort of what I use it for. It's sort of just a high-end movie watching and YouTube machine. If that's what you're using the iPad Pro for, I wouldn't look past the M2 iPad Pro as you're able to get that iPad for a pretty good discount nowadays and the performance is still going to be amazing. These numbers are only gonna matter when you do things like I'm about to show you. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Here I have the Final Cut Pro app for iPad. I'll say not now to notifications. Let's go ahead and edit this project. This is a, I think it's a 32 second demo clip from Apple. 
Now, I edit a lot of video for this YouTube channel on my MacBook Air. The MacBook I run this channel on is the M2 MacBook Air, and that thing just flies through video recording, at least the clips that I use. So this thing has an M4 chip, and it's kind of hard to believe that an iPad this thin has a more powerful CPU than my entire MacBook Air. But uh, if I were to export a clip this long on my MacBook, based on my experience doing it in the past, I would say it would take about a minute. So let's go ahead and try to export this and let's see if we can get lower than that one minute mark. I'll click on video and then I'll do all of the default settings and then I'll click on export and let's see how long it'll take. Wow, this is moving really fast. So I don't even think I'll have to speed up this part of the video just because it is exporting so fast. This is actually crazy. Wow, so it was able to export that uh, 4K video, the 32 second 4K video in what felt like, I don't know, 30 seconds or less. That is crazy impressive. I kind of want this chip in my MacBook Air because honestly, I don't like editing video on an iPad, but it really is crazy how much performance is in this iPad. And even after exporting that video, the iPad is still cool to the touch on the back, which is a really great sign in terms of thermal performance. And then in terms of testing, I have one more thing that I wanna show you, and this is what Apple was showing off when they released this iPad Pro. This is another really cool AI feature. So inside of Apple's Logic Pro, they have a really neat feature called Stem Splitter. And it is able to take any track and split the different parts of the track apart, such as vocals, bass, and more. So if I go ahead and double tap on this track, you can see we have a new option called Stem Splitter. If I go ahead and click on it, you can see it's gonna bring out the vocals, drums, bass, and other sounds. Let's click on split, and then it's gonna go ahead and do that. And it does it really fast too, thanks to the M4 chip. And here you can see we have the vocals, the drums, the bass, and other sounds. So let's go ahead and uh, click on single playback for just vocals, and let's listen to this. Hold me close till I get up. Time is barely on our side. I don't want to waste. And there's the bass. And here's other sounds. No, I don't want to waste what's left. So it's really crazy that you can just download uh, any song and uh, you can separate all of the sounds on the uh, iPad uh, using the M4 chip. Uh, that song was actually the copyright free song I played in YouTube. I simply downloaded it using a tool online, brought it into Logic Pro, and I was able to separate all of the sounds out uh, with just one click, which is pretty amazing uh, for an iPad this thin and light. So to wrap everything up, it would be a lie to say that this iPad is not impressive. However, I'd be lying to you if I didn't say I'm a little bit confused as to who this is being marketed towards because I just think for all of the things that this iPad can do, I can do it faster on my MacBook Air. Like if I wanna edit video, I know that the iPad Pro can export the video really fast, but I'm just so used to Final Cut Pro on my Mac, and I think the app itself is a lot better when you have a keyboard and trackpad. Yes, you can attach this to a keyboard and trackpad if you go ahead and buy whatever that keyboard is, like $400, but the experience still is not as good as the MacBook version and you have Logic Pro and apps like Photoshop, but again, I do think that it is better on the Mac. So who is this iPad for? Well, honestly, I think it is uh, going to be great for number one artists, because if you get that new Apple Pencil, there are some really cool features. Now, I didn't get any of the accessories just because I wanted to show you in this video what it's like uh, to have the base iPad experience. But if you get that new pencil, you get really cool haptic feedback when you pinch the pencil. So you can get uh, different options on the screen when you pinch it. And you also get barrel roll. So there's an accelerometer in the pencil. And when you roll the pencil, you can get different strokes on the screen. So if you are an artist, I definitely think that this iPad Pro in conjunction with the new Apple Pencil is going to be amazing. And also, I think this iPad Pro is going to be fantastic for photographers because an OLED screen in a device this thin is going to be fantastic for a reference monitor. 
Uh, some reference monitors that photographers use are upwards of $4,000. And now you can get an OLED screen in an iPad that looks amazing. So if you are a photographer using Photoshop and Lightroom, I think that the OLED display on this iPad is going to be amazing for you. But in all honesty, my opinion on why Apple put the M4 chip in this iPad is solely for marketing. I think Apple honestly could have put the M3 chip in this iPad Pro. However, they needed something in this iPad to stand out and make it special. And that is why they put the M4 chip in this iPad. And now Apple can say that this is the first device to have the M4 chip because they want to convince the investors that they are still innovating in terms of the iPad. Even though when it comes down to it, it is just still an iPad. And in all honesty, I think I'm just gonna keep using my 2018 iPad Pro because like I said, for all of the Pro stuff that I do, I'd rather just use my MacBook. And for most people, including myself, the iPad is just a glorified movie and YouTube machine, even though the hardware itself is very impressive as you've been able to tell throughout this entire video. So that's gonna do it for me in this video. I apologize for the video being so long, but I did have a lot that I wanted to cover in terms of this new iPad. Let me know your thoughts on this new iPad Pro down in the comments below. Do you think I was too tough on it? Do you think I didn't give it a fair shot because I didn't have the keyboard or pencil? Let me know all of your thoughts in the comments down below. Also, let me know if you think if this iPad Pro is worth the price because these things are getting very expensive nowadays as well. With all that said, if you guys enjoyed this video, please drop a thumbs up. My name is Michael with IDB. Thanks so much for watching. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.